Welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Suzanne and today we're talking about how I'm going to change over my tower from its winter setup to its summer setup to get the best worm casting production from these worms. So as you can see here I've had bubble wrap and cardboard to protect it because I'm in a single skinned outbuilding and so it does get very cold in here it can get to below minus zero temperatures and I don't heat this building at all but we've had quite a mild winter and these worms have been very active and so these worms have the sump, two feeding trays and this top tray. Now this top tray I usually have empty and my worms come up into here to breed and they'll also go down into the sump to breed. But during the winter what I do is I have this top level full of just cardboard and it's dry cardboard. So down in here you can see it is indeed dry but this is to act as an air buffer so that it will indeed keep these worms a lot warmer than if they were just left to their own devices because when they come up here to breed, it's a lot more damp in here. They set up their own little microclimate and there's not a lot in here other than the breeding worms which would freeze through. And the worms will die whilst the cocoons won't. But now that it's coming into summer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this tray down underneath the feeding trays and put that empty tray back on top. And so this tray will now become what Patrick from Vermicost Learn By Doing calls an inoculation tray. Now, you might not be able to see, so I'll just grab this little worm. But here... The worms have still been coming up because it's mild. My worms have been quite active. We've only had a few days at a time where it's been sub-zero. So my worms migrate up and down through this tower all the time. Because regardless of any instructions or information that you'll get about how to run these things, your worms won't read those instructions and they'll do as they please. So I'm going to dismantle this tower and I'll come back to you. So I've now dismantled the tower. This is my top feeding tray. That's the bottom feeding tray. And that top protection layer is up here. Now, what I've noticed is now that I've took it apart is that I've got an issue with potworms in here because due to the humidity, these trays are a little bit too damp. And if I can get in here, if it'll focus in, these here, these white ones, they don't get much bigger than that and they are the potworms. Now they're not a major issue as such, they're part of a composting system. But if you get a major bloom of them, they compete with your other worms for food and they're not great when you're putting castings into your house plants and everything else. And so I want to get rid of as much of them as possible. But what they are a sign of is that your bin is too acidic, which is not great for your worms anyway. Now, you may remember from previous videos that I put these toilet roll tubes within each other to try and absorb some of the moisture out of here and of course I don't want to get rid of these out of here because I'm going to have a lot of little worms hiding in there. There's also somewhere for them to go out of the really cold weather. Now I apologise for the light because I'm swapping from one place to another. This tray is sat where I normally film and it's sat on a 42 litre bucket but my light is there for the tower because that's where I'm going to be doing most of the filming. I'm also filming on a different camera so I can easily swap around everything. Now I've already fluffed this tray up to see what it's actually doing and what the worms have done is whilst they are migrating up and down everything this tray is actually not as processed as much as this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move this tray. Now, just before I do fluff it up, what I wanted to show you was I've actually been feeding in the middle through the winter. Normally, I feed in strips and I alternate them. But during the winter, 
it would be warmer where the food is decomposing so that would pull the worms into the middle but then they'd have somewhere to go if they wanted to but in the freezing temperatures they can move away from the outside into the middle right now i'm going to go back to strip feeding so i just wanted to show you that you can see the bedding around the outside and here in the middle that's a depression in the middle and so i just wanted to turn that over so you can see that that's where the worms are and here uh, there's a worm ball for you because all the worms were hiding in there look sorry worms to have disturbed you um, but what I am going to do is the reason that I'm moving these is um, I don't know how that plastic got in there we'll get that out make sure I've got no worms on there first get off I'm going to move this up to now be my top tray and I'm going to put some dry cardboard into what was my top tray to try and dry this bin out a bit because there aren't as many pot worms in this tray as that lower one and so if I can dry that out a bit that'll be great and plus most of the worms doing the job are actually down here I don't know how I've missed that and what it is. But anyway, I think I, I think this tray had a layer of cardboard in it and that's possibly what it is. There you go, look. Load of worms. So I'm going to swap these trays around and I'm going to make this the top feeding tray because this is the one that will be ready the quickest for me. And I'm going to put dry bedding in instead of using my pre-composted bedding which will already be damp and exasperate the problem so I'll come back to you when I've done that do you remember when I set up all of this for winter and I removed all of this and cleaned it out well look what my worms have done Can you see I haven't done any of this at all the worms have come down here to set up their own breeding system again and there are tons of juveniles down here with them now if i can just pick somebody up for you there we go this <laughs> very active adult is actually a european night crawler and once he settles down you can tell that by the way that they move because they're long, thin and they concertina in the way that they move. They move very differently to the red wigglers. See how long these stretch out? And you can also see that whilst they have the clitellum, it's not raised like it is. Don't go up my sleeve, mate. <laughs> Oh dear. So yeah, it's not raised like it is on a red, red wiggler. These are not the big fat worms like I showed you in my breeding bin. And they don't cross breed either. So I find that all my European night crawlers come down here to breed. And all of my uh, red wigglers go into the top empty tray to breed. So I just thought you might find that interesting. And I'm not going to empty this out. I'm going to leave it for them to do that. So I just thought I'd show you that before I reset this tower. So there we have it. The tower is now back together. Apart from the empty tray that I'm going to put back on top, which is here, and the roof. And so we have the sump where we've got the breeding European night crawlers. What was on top as just cardboard is now down at the bottom as our inoculating tray. What was the top feeding tray has gone down to be a lower feeding tray because it's taking longer because the worms have been down in the middle where it's been warmer. And that has had what is here. This is just micro shredded cardboard 
and so I put a lot of that in because as you can see here there are gaps and that's for the airflow which is important to get rid of those uh, potworms and mites and so here we're left with just or the feeding tray and as you can see the volume is really down in here which is also something that causes a problem because these trays drop into each other and that stops the airflow which again is what causes acidity to rise in here because it comes anaerobic and we don't want that and so now as you can see I've also got those tubes in here I am going to add some air back into this because the top tray won't actually put weight onto this and so I can fluff this up, get some air into it which will also help it to dry out a little bit and then feed it and I fed that other tray along here so I will feed this one along the back. So I'll come back to you in a moment when I've done that. So um, having fluffed up this bin, what I've done is I've taken a couple of those rolls, these, and I've shredded a few of them, put them on the bottom of here. And I have indeed gone ahead and I've put some of this cardboard in to try and dry this out. Because why I decided to do that is if you watched my eviction video, I had these bait cups and I said I was going to put these into the tower. And these are already quite damp, as is the food that I've put in. So I decided these worms are going to work pretty quickly through this now it's warming up. But also, I've got all the other worms to go in here. And I'm going to put them on here to time lapse this for you as well. So I've put some food in. I've put in my worm chow, the obligatory eggshell. And so oh, these will tear up a bit. So I am going to tear these up and then we'll get those worms in. So there you go, all our worms from the other bins are now down into this one to help all our others to increase the production of my worm castings ready for the summer and hopefully they'll all find their way to that food and crack on bringing me worm castings as quickly as they did last summer. Thank you for watching, being with me, I hope you'll like share, subscribe. Bye for now.